Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for Alpha 3 of Update 94 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, I have uh, I've broken from my usual every other week update cycle to to get another alpha out for you folks. And that is because one, I broke a lot of things in the last one or just didn't finish a bunch of things. And two, I've got some stuff I just really want tested right now and was feeling impatient. And so let's dive right in. This is a continuation of the ballistics work that I have been doing with the game, improving scopes and adding all sorts of simulation nuance to projectile trajectories and the way that various attachments affect our firearms. And so both as a testing tool for myself to make sure, you know, the changes I was making were what I thought they were, and as a utility for you folks, I have a new object for you all today, and this is the hover bench. It's basic. Imagine this sort of like a, a bench rest for sniping, um, but you know, a little science fiction, so that I don't have to worry about like connecting a component perfectly up to it and such. Let's pop that right there. And so, how does this work, and what does it do? Well, first, let us set up a target sheet for ourselves. I'm gonna put this down low and we're gonna send this out let's say to 250 meters so pretty far away at a, ch a distance that's honestly even pretty challenging to to shoot at accurately off a bipod unless you have a lot of practice in the game and so what this is for is specifically for doing a both for for just doing sort of like accuracy testing um as well as shooting things really long range and zeroing our scopes and you'll understand why that's imp important uh more in a little bit but let's first show this i'll show how this works so you basically hover a a firearm that you're holding over this and click the toggle object lock button you'll notice this is now just locked in the air Note, I can, I'm gonna turn on my controller so you can see this. Boop, over there you go. I can still grab this gun. I can still pull the trigger. It's as though I'm still holding this. It just won't update to the position of my hand. And this allows me to move it with these controls here with an incredible amount of precision. So I can click this button here to zero its rotation. So we've got a nice clean starting point. And then we have these little floating manipulators, which you can set up to be on the left, right side or turned off. And these are our three cardinal directions linearly and rotationally. So what we can do here is we can just, let's turn the magnification on this up to like say 26 X. Uh, what was the height we distance? We had picked 250. 250 let's pop that up there and then i can grab one of these and drag on its dimension to move the gun so i can i can start off by dragging this actually way up to my eye almost like we're using <laughs> using the rifle as a ranging scope to make it easier to see and then what i can do is i can lower the sensitivity here to make it so that it takes a large gesture to move a very small amount which is super handy for rotation so we get it close then set our sensitivity to 0.01 i might even turn the magnification the rest of the way up and then use this to get us, oh wait, did I, yep, to get us perfect. Wonderful. So we're aimed right in there and let us fire. Oh, helps to put a round in the chamber first. Wonderful. Let's fire a group of three. So there, you can see the effect. Notice how those don't flawlessly overlap. 
and that's because of the fact that I added some mechanical inaccuracy. Obviously, the, this is an AWM. It's still a tremendously accurate rifle. That's 250 meters, but there is still a little bit of difference. And because of those... Um, what's it called the uh the sort of projectile velocity charts and the fact that this is such a long barreled weapon uh it actually shoots a little high of our default zero so that actually gives us an opportunity to to tweak that now in any sort of like combat situation in h3 that little bit of vertical difference at this range wouldn't i mean you'd you'd still hit the eye slit of, of a shielded sosik at this range uh, with that difference, but if we want to get it perfect, what we can now do is use the elevation MOA adjustment now. I'm going to move that reticle up to match where those shots hit, and then use my little thing here, and then fire again. Bammo! Wonderful wonderful and that lateral adjustment is probably actually just because we're offset uh from it frankly put so yeah so that allows you what this allows you to do is to really exactly tune a, a scope in for a specific range and this is even more important when we talk about one of the new simulation elements that i have added to the game and I'm gonna actually use uh, a, a less accurate weapon so that the change is more pronounced so you can see its effect a little more. So let's add a new set. Let's, uh, let's do this at, yeah, just 200. Uh, I'm feeling indecisive, 150. I, I, what I actually, yeah, that'll work. So let's grab ourselves a Bren 806 and let's talk about something called point of impact shift. So in in real life, anytime you add a, a muzzle device to a firearm, especially a suppressor, because a bunch of things about that firearm change. It's, it's overall barrel length, the moment that the round leaves the barrel relative to the like vibration of the barrel um the fact that there's superheated gas moving uh behind and next to the round for a very brief period of time uh coming you know, you know inside the suppressor uh the round is not going to hit in the same spot now it, this isn't to say that suppressors automatically make a a weapon less accurate in the say in the way that you think about that in video game terms i.e widening the spread that uh that rounds would hit in it's more that it changes the point of impact in an impossible to predict but consistent way Meaning I put a, well, let's take a look at it, actually. So let's, let's toggle, object lock, let's zero our rot. Let's put our same scope on here. Let's actually reset our sheet. Wonderful. Let's pull this up. Pull this back here for convenience. Turn our sensitivity down. Get it there. Get it close. Turn it down even more. There we go. So let's uh, let's fire let's fire a group of five shots to establish a sort of baseline for this. Uh, helps to go like that first. Cool. So it's shooting a little high of the base zero. Uh, actually, wait. That's because this is still set to two fifty. Uh, I forgot to reset that. So, <laughs> whoops. Let's, uh, let's take two. Cool. So reset that. Let's set our, there we go. Scope settings, reset 150, etc. Cool. So that's our, our, our sort of base group there, which gives you an idea of what the mechanical accuracy of this weapon is going to be in the game and now let's put a suppressor on it i'm going to put one of our new ones here this is called the chungus in game just because i love that word and well 
That's a, that's a chungusy suppressor right there. So let's fire and see what happens. So as you can see, we get a group of about equivalent distribution in terms of sort of total range, but we have slightly shifted upward and to the left. So what we're gonna do is, and this is this is your before I actually I will get wind simulation in at some point, trust me. But until then, this is what you use the windage adjustment for. We actually use this to shift our reticle over. Oh, wrong button. Do 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 do. And we'll move it. We'll move it up or 0.5 MOA and to the left. 2 MOA and then obviously we're going to readjust our bench rest boom new set reset target five more shots look at that that is about as zeroed in as we can possibly get so there you have it we have a system that essentially takes the unique ID of the rifle or any uh, firearm in the game, the unique ID of the muzzle device and generates what's called a hash. It's essentially, it's a unique value just for the combination of those two weapons that is the same regardless. Like if you put this suppressor on this rifle, you will get ex the exact same offset as I did here but if we both put that suppressor on a different rifle, we'll get a, we'll get a result that is unique to that suppressor and that rifle being put together, which from everything I've read is pretty much how things work in real life. So, so yeah, as I said, this is one of those things that is is really for the simulation wonks. Most of what I'm showing you here is not going to meaningfully affect common, you know, CQB engagements or uh, even engagements out to about 100 meters unless you're trying to hit something very, very small. This is for the snipers, the folks who love sitting down uh, and doing long range shooting in the game uh, to, to bring some more you know, interesting micro gameplay and adjustment. Oh, and very importantly, all of these settings that you've made uh, do get saved in the vault. So if you wish to put together your favorite sort of uh, combat rifle with a specific suppressor on it or what have you, and want to just make sure that your optic is perfectly aligned for 100 or 200 meters, you'll be able to do that now and save it. So yeah. Whew. So yeah, and that's uh, and in addition to this, as I said, uh, there are a bunch of new attachments. We've got these these five new suppressors. Oops, see how we treat our things. There we go. Um, folks have been asking for a long time for some LPVOs. If you don't know what that means, it's a low power variable optic. And so what these are are scopes that still have adjustable magnification, but it's built within a much lower range. So these are one X's up to about six X. So these end up making really, really great uh, sort of like short to medium range combat scopes. And we've got two for you, uh, the Flamenco six and the VD one uh, with your choice of reticle style between them based on oh and we've got this is uh this is the ham scope and uh really wonderful compact combo optic we've got a uh, a fixed 4x here with a really clear looking reticle and then we've got a red dot right on top ready to go and as you can see it's nice and compact so this would fit even on a really small compact smg and be super useful for being able to quickly switch between engaging at two ranges so i expect that will get a lot of use so yeah oh and lastly if you'd like to find this where to uh to spawn it it is over here in the utility section oh it is not showing up well it will be in the utility oh i did not change the picture of it so it's a shooting hover bench that will be a picture of the bench and not the ammo spawner because 
I'm glad I caught that, because Anton forgot to do that. So you can bring this into uh, any scene with the item spawner and have fun uh, tweaking your optics and doing some long-range shooting. Anywho, let's get out of <laughs> accidental arm swinger jump. Let's uh, let's jump out of VR and talk about what else is in this update. Yo! So, hope you're all excited about all of that. Sorry if the uh, color balance, by the way, on this part of the video is uh, is a little strange. Uh, the, the sky right now is that scary shade of yellow from the nearby fires that reminds you that the world is kind of beginning to end. So, uh, so yeah, things it's it's uh, it's quite believe me, it's it's stranger for me sitting here. Anywho, what else do we have in this update? As I said, all muzzle devices now have internal mechanical accuracy characteristics as well. So they are not just the same as they have uh, as they have been in the past. Ones that are clearly improvised and crappy are not good. Uh, and a certain set of them are sort of the higher precision than others. Older ones are lower precision, etc. Also, muzzle brakes now don't all have exactly the same effect. They have a variable relationship to the amount that they dampen uh, muzzle velocity, but also how much they, um, not muzzle velocity, muzzle rise, but also how, how much louder they are. So the more effective muzzle brakes are louder to the bots in terms of how far away they can be heard by them, and the weaker ones are obviously don't have as much of a magnification. And I might eventually make that kind of more directional, the way it actually is with a brake, and you know exactly what I'm talking about if you have stood next to someone firing with a really effective muzzle brake, um, but I have not gotten around to doing that part of the futsy sim yet. Um, Let's see, talked about the zeroing and reticle adjustments. I've continued to tweak the reticles on the hollow sights and the red dots. I think they're better now. I don't have the luminance adjustment back in yet because I want to get it really good for whatever the default is going to be. And then once I know that works and I'm done tweaking the actual reticle texture, I can then build the profile of the varying sort of color luminances to make the overbright and then the dim sort of night sight uh, options for it and interpolate those values together. Uh, what else? Oh, so some of the stuff in the last alpha that I said I had added in terms of ballistic effects, uh, turns out I hadn't. I, uh, I took the whole time to calculate all of them and then didn't actually apply the final multiplier to things. So now in this alpha, the difference in projectile velocity related to barrel length is now 100% in the game. Um, whoops. Uh, oh, and I changed how maximum projectile travel distance is computed. Some folks who might have, say, set up a, uh, a bipod in the Arizona range with, like, a pistol uh, weapon and went to fire, might have fired from, like, a kilometer away and gone, Hey, but does, uh, are, my, are my bullets disappearing? Yes, they were. I had had, for performance reasons, a sort of max range clamp of, like, 800 meters in for a lot of projectiles because I figured... No one's going to be firing past that. Turns out they were. So that is uh, that has now been fixed. And as I said, it is a scene local setting. So scenes that are purely indoor, I can actually set that even closer for bullets that sort of escape through. Um, and for distant scenes, it's further. Do note that in large outdoor scenes, this will have changed the performance profile. Like if you just take like a like a 9mm SMG with a drum mag, and just fire it into the air, that will now be a little more performance expensive in a big outdoor scene because those projectiles will be allowed to live longer than they were before. Just something to be aware of. It shouldn't really affect most people, but just in case someone, you're surprised and you happen to do really ridiculous things with high fire right weapons, that's now uh, in the cards. Uh, I fixed the scaling case of a user of who actually owned a Model 10 sent me a picture uh, next to a ruler of their Model 10 revolver and turns out that mine was too small. I, I figured out what had happened. I had used the overall length dimension for a shorter version of the revolver than mine, which ends up, I ended up sort of shrinking the whole revolver to match that overall dimension. Um, 
and that was easy to figure out once I had a picture of a real one next to a ruler, which is surprisingly difficult to find for like any firearm, uh, to fix it. Um, fix the glitch out scopes, I fixed the slide bolting issues on Mosin's and the 98K, uh, the G17 Customs Red Dot. Things to be aware of. I'm going to start actually mentioning these in the devlog because I had a million and a half people this past week go, Hey, the integrated scopes are broken, even though it was right in the change log. So I'm going to say the known issues for this alpha are that red dot luminance changes are disabled and scopes that can rotate to the side, like the 3X magnifier, that is still disabled. I will fix it later. Whew, so that just about... Oh, one last thing. So I also added uh, another gun, uh, sort of, in that I actually had implemented this pistol like a long time ago. It's called the uh, Ruby Pistol. It's like a World War I era 32 ACP. It's like a semi-auto version of the Union Pistol, basically. Uh, and just forgot about it until a user was like putting together a wish list of firearms of what they would like. And they were like, Ruby Pistol. And I was like, wait a minute. I have a vague memory of implementing that. And did a search of my Unity project. And I was like, oh, look at that. This is completely finished gun that I just forgot about somehow and just have scrolled past for a year maybe more in my list of prefabs didn't notice it so I feel like a dum-dum but that's in the game now too so I hope you enjoy uh that little pop gun I swear it's a uh, 2020 it's getting to me Anywho, I hope you all have a, uh, a wonderful weekend playing around with this. Let me know what you think. Um, have fun with the, uh, with the bench rest. I think I I'm personally really excited to see uh, how it ends up being useful to folk. Um, but not just in terms of adjusting scopes, but, you know, let's be frank. Some of the VR tracking systems have suboptimal tracking. Uh, for doing really, really long-range shooting, even with a bipod. Um, and there are lots of folks out there with various sorts of mobility issues um, that make holding controllers really steady and such um, difficult. And so one of the things that's exciting to me about this little bench is it allows you to still, like, it's still challenging to hit something 400 or 1,000 meters out, even with something that locks the rifle, as you have to still shoot and make adjustments and sort of figure out where you're hitting. So this allows, I think this this device expands uh, the number of users who can uh, who can play around with that without it just being a frustrating fight uh, with tracking precision. So I hope you folks enjoy it. Anywho, have a, a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.